Shalom, shalom. Brothers and sisters, I'm coming to you this morning. Well, it's morning here. Um, I'm in Pacific time and I wanted to talk to you today because I know a lot of people, after I sent out that little message a few days ago, uh, let me read what I put out. Um, uh, I said that Yahweh God says in three days, I'm going to bring my wrath against a U.S. city because of their wickedness. Um, to remind them that I am God and master. Now, I put one on Facebook that also basically said the same thing. But in addition to that, he said, because um, America has disregarded him and rejected his people. Of course, that's the Hebrew uh, people uh, who live here in America. And we know that we're awakening. And uh, this morning when I prayed, I asked the Most High what he wanted me to say to you like a, a sentence a word a point of reference and he said to listen or perish if we don't listen to the most high god yahweh and we keep listening to man we're going to get in the cross hairs of his wrath and as i told you just what i said three days ago um the most high put that in my heart and mind and spirit to speak to you that he was going to bring wrath now a lot of you sent me comments back and asked well is that going to be you know the hurricane laura that was in the gulf and on its way um the most high god told me don't say anything yet he wanted me to wait i didn't know why because i wasn't i can honestly say i wasn't 100 percent sure if this was going to be Hurricane Laura or it was going to be another incident in another state. So I waited. I was obedient. I, I listened to the Holy Spirit. I didn't want to rush ahead and say things that he did not want me to say. I fear God. I don't want to say anything that's not in his will. However, last night when I was asleep, and it was like, you know, maybe about one in the morning here. Um, and that means it was probably maybe three or four in the morning, uh, your time uh, in America, if you live on the other side. And he spoke to me some things. He showed me some things in a vision. And I want to tell you what he showed me. Because, of course, no one had any idea of what the hurricane was going to look like after it passed or, you know, what was going on right then. But the Most High God, Yahweh, knew because he was in control. He was the one bringing it. And he was the one who was going to unleash it. And so um, in this dream last night, here's what I said. I'm going to tell you about two dreams. One was a couple of weeks ago. But I'm going to tell you the one I had last night in the middle of the night. Because I was questioning Yahweh. Well, it's, it's the day. Wednesday's three days. Um, so what's going to happen? He said, hold on. Just wait. Wait a minute. Uh, and so I did. And so in this dream... I saw, it was almost like I was in the area of the hurricane in Louisiana or wherever it was. And it was sort of following the hurricane. So I saw certain things and he let me see certain things. Now, one of the things was this big, huge oak tree. You know, those big ones, this wide at the bottom, big oak trees can grow really large, sometimes seven to eight feet around. And so uh, I saw this big oak tree and this great board, you know, like this, two or three inch plywood board what had been so forcely jammed into it that it just cut through it. You know, like when the hurricanes come, the winds can be so high, they can take normal objects and use them as projectiles. Well, this board had cut through this big old tree about halfway through. So you could see the board coming, you know, halfway through and on out to outside of the tree. And the next thing I saw was a church. This church was, um, it had been stripped down bare until only the beams and boards, everything had been ripped off of it. You know it was a church. However, there was a boat or a yacht sitting in the back of this church, not like in the church where the service is going, but actually sitting in the back side of it, almost as if it was an extra building built onto this church. But this yacht was sitting inside. Uh, however, just like the church, this area where this yacht was sitting totally stripped down to the boards, you know, the two by fours and boards, just framing. In other words, the framing. And I remember thinking while I'm looking at this, well, what is a yacht doing inside of a church? Not in the church, but, you know, just as if, you know, how these big churches are, they have different departments um, built on to extend the church. Well, this yacht boat was sitting inside 
And so someone else also said it. As I'm pondering, I didn't see anyone, but I saw, I heard someone say, yeah, what, what, what is a boat doing in a church? And I remember sensing in my spirit that this yacht or boat was what the pastor had bought for himself. And this storm had just come through and tore up the church, tore up everything except for the framing. So you knew it was a church, but you also knew that there was a yacht sitting there. Okay, so moving on. After that, it was in like little sequences. Next, I saw like the silhouette of a city. Like, you know how you see the big glass city, high and low buildings and and saw that. I don't know if it was in Texas or it was in Louisiana. I don't know, but there were tall buildings, like city buildings. And uh, then I saw that there were some black people standing outside, you know, as if they had, um, they had endured the storm and made it through. So I went up to one of them and I asked uh, this black lady who was standing in a group of black ladies, like, how many people died? And she said, well, you know, I heard about a hundred people died in this storm. And then as we're standing there, another lady comes up and said, well, no, I, I think really actually about 25 people died in the storm. And so now one thing about visions and dreams, the Holy Spirit and people who believe in God, of course, uh, will give you numbers sometimes and they will express themselves through your subconscious and your spirit. So uh, I've had dreams before where someone gave me $5, but the next morning I got a $50 check. Get it? Or, you know, I got all, saw food or lots of food and actually it was money the next morning. Or maybe it was actually a lot of food. But in other words, sometimes our dreams express themselves in different ways, but it is always the Holy Spirit speaking to us so we will understand what is to come. And when you ask God, Most High God, Yahweh, to uh, reveal the interpretation, He always will, if it was from Him. So uh, that's what they told me. Now, remember, the time right now for me is around 1030 uh, maybe 11 o'clock in the morning Pacific time. You are a little further ahead if you live in the Louisiana area or up north towards, you know, uh, Virginia or Washington, D.C. So I'm just telling you things I know right now. I haven't perused the internet to find out information. Uh, all I know it was a category four hit, sent us a lot of water and everything. I have no idea about anything else as far as facts. Only what the Most High God showed me. Uh, now, the next thing, um, I want to tell you about a vision before this all came about, before even the tropical storm was on radar. Um, this is about two weeks ago. I had a dream. And in this dream, it's really one of those shaking ones, you know, where you know it's so real seemingly that God is trying to tell you something. I was outside and I saw a lot of people to my left, like you know, as if they're on the sidewalk, like lots of people on, on the side of the street. Um, it, they seemed like they were white people. And a lot of them, was, they were so scared. They were so terrified. They was pointing up to something, pointing up. And I didn't know what they were pointing up at. And they were so scared. They were like leaning over on each other and huddled up together, but lots of them. I looked up because I didn't feel like there was nothing to be scared. What in the world are these people afraid of? So I looked up. And when I looked up in the sky, in the clouds, I saw an army, an army, a celestial army. And, and when we say celestial or angelic, everybody thinks, oh, these little fairies and little uh, see-through bodies. No, these were solid forms, solid beings, solid people, not people, but you know, angelic beings. And what I saw was it was an army and this captain was out in front and there were about three or four standing with him. I could see them really clearly. And behind them in rank was this large army just, you know, flowing off into the distance. But they, the clouds were sort of in front of them. So you could see them, but the clouds was like, um, you could see through the clouds that they were in rank, in line. But him, the captain and the other three or four standing in front of the line was visible, just standing there on the clouds bold. And I remember thinking, they have uniforms on. You could not see the faces because they actually had a hood on. Like, um, you never see Star Wars and those, uh, the guys in the white gear. Um, I think they're called, um, uh, stormtroopers. That's what they looked like they had on. They were ready for battle. 
And then I'm thinking, wow, now I see what they're afraid of, but I still wasn't afraid. I believe my sons were with me. I have two sons, uh, they're adults. And this captain pointed and told me, oh, you go in there. Like, you're gonna be okay, you go over there, you go in there, like one by one. And so my oldest son went in first, and then my I told my youngest son, go next. And I started walking, I'm still looking to the left at all these people like, they are losing it. So we just walked in, we were fine. So I believe truly that was God showing me that uh, his army um, was sent and they were already positioning themselves to do damage. And I don't think they just come for one damage. I think this is the beginning of a lot of damage that's going to be done to the U.S. And uh, I think that's why he spoke and said a while ago when I in prayer asked him what he wanted me to say to you, his people, his sons and daughters of the Most High, when he said, listen or perish. In other words, it ain't talking about just listen to me. It's talking about listen to the Holy Spirit. So it will tell you what to do, where to go, when to go, because it is disobedience that causes a lot of trouble in um in America, it's that not fearing God, that always uh, thinking that they are right and there is no master except them. And then when it's time for destruction, everyone is blaming God. Um, so we must understand this is a real season of God's wrath. He is unleashing it on America. And if you want to survive, you had better lock in to God Most High Yahweh, Yeshua HaMashiach. Seek their counsel. Uh, be guided by them. And I want to say a word to you young people. Stay off the streets on the Sabbath. During the Holy Sabbath, which is Friday evening to Saturday evening, don't be out and about because what's happening is these dark forces are very frightened. They are very afraid. And I think that was symbolizing the people. Uh, and when an animal is frightened, I don't care if you're trying to rescue him, he's going to try to bite you, scratch you, and do whatever he can, uh, thinking that you are the enemy. So stay off of these streets doing those. I know it's hard, you know, you want to go somewhere, you want to do something. But if you want to preserve your life and protect yourself, honor God, keep that Sabbath. And that is your protection, both on your mind, your spirit, and your body. So do that for your own safety. Um, and then Yahweh says, guard yourself. Um, be careful. Like I said, don't listen to what man is saying and telling you to do. Listen to, this is a season to listen intently to Yahweh most high. Um, I also have something else. He spoke to my spirit last night. I have been sensing this for the last few months. Okay. So, and I'm going to tell you because I had sensed about the coronavirus months before it came, about how, and I know I've told you in a few videos, how that the flu vaccine had a lot to do with predisposing you to get coronavirus. Well, I've been having that same little sense. Um, something else is coming and it's gonna be a perfect storm. And the reason for that is, first of all, these little lost Gentile scientists and all of them kept telling everybody, put mask on, put mask on, put mask on. Okay, well, what you're doing is when you put those masks on and you wear it, say for instance, you work on a job for eight hours and you put that mask on, you're actually breathing back in carbon dioxide, which undermines the lungs. Let me tell you, all of your organs, we've studied this, all of your organs need oxygen to survive. Without oxygen, in a few minutes, the brain, the lungs, and everything start to deteriorate. So think of these masks as a form of that, but like a, a slower form. So this about six months of wearing these masks, you know, jobs, eight hours with masks on. Then around winter time, when flu season comes in, people are going to start taking flu shot, thinking somewhere in their back of their mind that somehow this is going to help uh, offset the coronavirus, where actually it's going to be incubating the coronavirus, helping to facilitate it. So I keep getting this feeling like I, like I did before, it's going to be a perfect storm. Don't listen to the Gentile pagans telling you solutions. Listen to God, Yahweh Most High. Now, we're not saying try to go in the store and wrestle somebody down who tells you to put on a mask. You're in that store maybe 20, 30 minutes. 
Put that mask on because it's a law or the rule. But when you get home, don't put those masks on. I see people riding in their car down the road with a mask on. Who you contaminating yourself? I mean, people, one person in the car riding with masks on. It doesn't make common good sense. And you know, God's ways are simple. They're not complicated. Man makes things complicated, but God does not. So, um, you know, I had the analogy of how I keep feeling this creepy feeling that that's going to pose a big problem. It's like, you know, when you used to be little in the South, if you're my age, you remember, and your mom disciplined you or your dad, and you're standing there and maybe they're going to discipline you and they're talking to you about something. And then one of your brothers or sisters chimes in and says a rude word or comment to the parent. Oh boy, you know, they're going to get beat. Okay, we call it beating, but it's switching and discipline. And nowadays people call it abuse, but that's a lie too. Unless it's someone who's not, you know, uh, walking in the ways of God. So I just keep getting this feeling that, yeah, trouble is coming. These Gentile people who don't want to listen, don't want to humble themselves, still killing God's chosen people, uh, burnt bronze sons, have no fear of him whatsoever. All of that is bringing wrath. And this Hurricane Laura, notice that's another thing he mentioned to me. If you want to figure out if God is involved in something, see how it lines up with other events. This one is one of those, you know, things that set a record or a precedence, pres precedence, uh, so we know that God is upping his power, he's upping his wrath, he's unleashing it, and he's trying to prepare his holy chosen people to move from their you know, position of not paying attention to paying attention. Because it's for you, it's for you, it's God coming to humble your enemies, giving you opportunity to think uh, hear from him, not be looking in their eyes and their faces all the time, making up stuff, lying. But if we're still going to get caught up in politics and voting and all of this silliness, we're going to miss the turn in the road. We're going to miss our exodus alarm and we're going to get stuck here. And I'm here to tell you what's coming is going to be a lot more worse than what you've all already seen. This is like a precursor to some things that are coming. And if we don't listen, we'll be caught in it with the ones that's supposed to be disciplined. Okay, so this is what I just want to say to you today about uh, Hurricane Laura. It is also God's way of saying um, the wickedness that has gone on in Louisiana and, and the world, specifically America though, because she has seen like, just made it her business to oppress God's holy chosen people, to grind them down into the dust, to kill any one of them, especially the males. And this is what the Yahweh Most High also spoke. He said, they are killing those young black dark skinned men, you know, because they can't get to the original one, Yeshua HaMashiach. They can't get up there and kill him. That's who they're really after. Even in my book, I mentioned, uh, uh, the hatred for the black man was never about the color of a man's skin. It was about God himself. It was about Yeshua HaMashiach himself because we are in the image of Yeshua HaMashiach. So the best thing that they can do, that dark force that jumps into that policeman, is to kill the one that bears his image, his imprint, his likeness, uh, both in nature and physical outward appearance. And so that's why I said you must teach your children to stay in on the Sabbath. This is a time and a season to get to know what the laws are in the word of God and stick to it. It's your protection. It's your deliverance. So I thank you for joining me. And I thank you for all the people who sent me comments and said, hey, is it Hurricane Laura? Yes, it looks like it really was. And um, I know that God had already prepared this word for his people so three days before, so you could understand it was his doing. Uh, you know, it, here in the Gentile kingdom, pagan kingdom of America, they tend to want to throw any, um, any responsibility for blessings or judgment off of God. They, they focus it on themselves. Oh, you know, well, it happened because of this or it happened because of that. No, it be happened because 
Yahweh Most High, God sent it. He unleashed it and he's not through. And, and I'm sending a message to you people in Louisiana. You know, you're notorious for your witchcraft. You're notorious. I'm just speaking the truth. You're notorious for your little uh, parades, you know, in February. And uh, you have got to understand that God is a God of holiness, a God of righteousness. And he will not forever let you continue to blatantly uh, parade your wickedness to the world and act like it's something that is okay with him because it's not. Um, you know, Louisiana's almost turned into a little small Sodom and Gomorrah. And God is a God of righteous judgment. Fear him. Turn from your wicked ways. Seek his face and uh, seek his counsel and let him heal your mind because it's the mind thing. Satan takes over the minds. People begin to think that they can do anything they want. They can kill black people, God's holy chosen people, and nothing will happen, no repercussions. Uh, yeah, maybe they have a little people in the street rioting and stuff, but it won't be. No, you just got the full force of God's wrath. And he's sending a message to you other cities in America. Prepare yourselves because judgment is also going to fall on you. You might not never know how it might be. It could be an earthquake. It could be a lot of things. So we must change our attitude towards Yahweh. And let me say one more thing just before I leave. I remember just a few days ago, uh, before I think the, um, you know, the hurricane was on the radar, I had heard that there was a young man who was in prison or something and for stealing some hedge clippers, a young black man. And I think they said they sent it up to the Supreme Court or, or you know, Louisiana Supreme Court, their version of it. And there was one black woman judge on that panel and she voted to, you know, commute his sentence, so I can't remember, or cut it short. All of the rest of the members of this um, judge panel were white, and some of them, of course, white males, and they all said no. So they outvoted this black judge, and something in my spirit uh, said, yeah, that is one of the things that God is bringing judgment, the injustice. The injustice of it all. Yeah, they said he had done things in the past. Of course, he had served time for those things. You know, as a black man, he's going to serve time if he got caught for it. But this time, he stole some hedge clippers. And they gave him, I believe, life in prison. So, look out. Look out. Thank you for listening. And I pray you have a blessed day. And um, keep tuning in to this station because... God is sending his word. I want to communicate it to you honestly, directly, and truthfully. So may you be blessed. Join me again.